Yes, yes, yes. It is that time again. It is time for another episode of On Top and Hot. With your host, John Zadar, and this is Wednesday. It is December 6th. Which reminds me, I've got that live streaming event tomorrow, Thursday. I do this every Thursday, 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. I go on for a little over an hour, me and my co-host. We're there to talk to other investors about stocks they're interested in. I share stocks with you all week. This gives you a chance to share some stocks with us. Drop it in the comment box. I'll go over the information. Taylor will go over the charts and we'll give you our opinion on it. Now, sometimes we do get more stocks than we can handle. Six or seven is about all you can really do in an hour or so. So if you really want your ticker looked at, get it in the queue early. I put up a placeholder for the video on YouTube early. Maybe lunchtime. So you can drop your ticker in there. I'll see it early. It goes in the queue early. First come, first serve. Four o'clock Eastern Standard Time, tomorrow, every Thursday. So what we do on this show is we like to look at hot OTC and penny stocks. We're looking for stocks under five bucks on any market that have potential to make us money. And most of the stocks I find, I determine their heat by looking at the charts first. It's easy to go through a lot of charts and it's very easy to see heat in a chart at a glance. You can see a volume is coming in. If there's a breakout setup, if she's been running strong and hard. Well, when you find a chart that has heat, then take the time to go rummaging around through all the press releases and the filings, looking for a catalyst. If you get lucky and find yourself a nice catalyst, and remember, it doesn't have to be the most recent piece of news. A stale catalyst can get a hot chart moving. So if you find a nice piece of news to match your hot chart, you've got yourself a hot penny stock to put on your watch list and keep an eye on. And these are the sort of stocks I'm sharing with you. And I've got some for you right now. First one we're going to take a look at is NEON, ticker N-E-O-N. Ne Let's see now. I think it's NEONODE. That's it. NEONODE. NEONODE is in a breakout right now on an atypical breakout chart. It looks sweet, folks. And she just had news come out today. It is big news that is going to affect her in a big way. So NEON finished today at $1.83, almost 23% gains today. She's on the major exchange, the NASDAQ. This comes with benefits. Penny stocks on the OTC, you got to pay for every transaction to get in, to get out. On the major exchanges, they're free. And you get a lot more volume up there on the major exchanges. And you can trade them pre-market, after-market. You can't do that with OTC stocks. So what is NeoNode about? Well, they tell us here we provide optical touchscreen solutions for handheld consumer and industrial electronic devices. We license our touchscreen technology to original equipment manufacturers, OEMs, and original design manufacturers, ODMs, who embed our touchscreen technology into electronic devices they develop and sell, such as mobile phones, ebook readers, mobile internet devices, global positioning systems, digital picture frames, micro PCs, and a lot more. That's the big news. It's gotten a lot further than just our little devices. The cornerstone of our solution is our innovative optical infrared touchscreen technology. What we're talking about here, folks, is a holographic image. I've jumped on over here to the website neonode.com to give us a little description about this because it is the whole basis to their technology. Neonode's touchscreen interaction uses revolutionary infrared touch sensing technology that brings you 100% image clarity and unrivaled durability. Whether you need a fully customized implementation for your product or are looking for a fast retrofit solution, our products are perfect for a wide range of applications such as automotive controls, medical devices, avionics, or rugged industrial systems. They're even using them on elevators, Retrofitting elevators from the 1800s with this stuff. Our infrared touch is immune to electronic magnetic interference and can be seamlessly coupled with traditional touch technologies to improve reliance accuracy on critical applications. Whatever you can do on a touch screen, you can do with this. You can poke, you can swipe, you can scroll, you can enlarge, whatever. They go on to tell us their infrared touch also has the unique ability to make any surface interactive. 
whether you like the digital touch capabilities on wood, etched glass, metal, or even your favorite pillow. Neonode provides you with complete design freedom. And I'm serious. They can get it on your pillow if that's what you want. Neonode technology is currently deployed in more than 80 million products worldwide. Where have I been? I had no idea they had this out there. I guess that makes me under the radar. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Well, we've got a nice increase in volume going from roughly 40,000 up to 250,000. What is that? Almost uh, seven, six? Yeah, 600% increase. Share structure for Neon. We've got ourselves a pretty decent share structure here. Outstanding share count is just about 15 million. We don't know what our float is, but it's not going to be any higher than that. That's a great float. Market cap, we're just about $23 million. Taking a look at the financials for the company. Well, they're making steady revenues. For the last three years, they've been doing over $5.5 million. And they're taking home steady profits. Looking at our quarterly reports, it's about the same thing. They've had some strong points. Uh, at the end of 2022, they had a nice jump. But on average, they're doing 1.2 million and they're bringing home 1.1, 1.2 million in profit. It's looking pretty good. Now we do have a financial that just came out here. It dipped. They said they did 1 million the last quarter, which is down about 17% from a year ago. And it's down about, uh, what is that, 20% from the last quarter. Looking at the balance sheet. Well, cash and cash equivalents, they got about 20 million in the bank, roughly. Total assets, about 26 million. Oh, look at that. Total liabilities is only 2 million. That means we have positive stockholder equity of about 24 million. I like that a lot. Checking out the disclosures. We've got a recent 10Q here. That is their most recent financial. That is going to give you all the information on the company. So if you're interested, don't go running over to Google doing searches. You're going to find everything in one form instead of having to go to 22 different sites getting pieces of the puzzle. And then we have an 8K that came out on the 9th. Let's just poke our heads into that and see what that is. Uh, this is about their financials as well. So let's just jump on over to the news. Now, we don't have a lot of news here. I just told you about their financial results. There's more information in there if you want to read it. But the news that came out today is what's got the stock running harder. She is in the midst of the breakout right now. They tell us here that Neonode has been awarded by a leading commercial vehicle, OEM, that is a major dealer, to supply driving monitor system software to the OEM's global range of commercial vehicles. Folks, that's a home run. They're getting their technology put into cars that you and I buy. Boom! That's what we've been waiting for. Neonode will receive licensing revenues from 2025 when the first vehicles equipped with the Neonode solution reach the market. This is a breakthrough win for Neonode and our multi-sensing technology for commercial vehicle applications. We will build on this to expand our driver and in-cabin monitoring business in both the commercial vehicle segment and in the light vehicle and passenger car segment in the coming years. The global DMS, that is driver monitoring system, that market is already a multi-billion dollar market and they're expecting it to grow big in the next 10 years. And I am too. Now the fact of the matter is that this just isn't for driving, it's for anything. For example, media, entertainment, your stereo, your TV, your movies. Yeah, I said TV. You know they're putting in 27-inch screen TVs now into these cars? They're going up into the ceiling and they just roll down for the back seat. <laughs> you get a 27-inch screen. And all of these consoles, all of these buttons are going to be holographic. So they're not going to be in anything. They're not going to get dirty. They're not going to get broken. And they'll disappear as soon as you're not using them. What a technology. I think it's hot. And now that they've got, got them into cars, it's going to take a little while to see them. 2025 is when they say they're going to come out. But this is the beginning, right? And I think this company is on the front lines with this technology. I would love to see it. <laughs> Haven't seen it yet.
Speaking of seeing it, let's go take a look at that chart. I got to say, that is a wild chart for NEON. We're going to chart NEON and the other stocks on my free trading platform, Think or Swim. This is a six-month, four-hour view for Neonode, Inc. We've got a high back at the end of May of just about $9, $8.97 when she was firmly over the 200 then she wasn't, and she hasn't been for a very long time, hitting a low here of $1.02 at the end of October. Now, these are huge falls, folks, and I have no idea why she fell. But she was up here at roughly $8 and fell to roughly $4. You're looking at almost a 50% drop right there. And then over here, she was roughly 4 and fell down to roughly 2 Another 50% drop. Those are incredible gaps, folks, that are going to have to be filled. And we know that when she gets into these gaps, there's going to be some strong growth. Now, I'm throwing up some resistances here that you can easily see. All the prices are sitting right there in a line. Definitely, we got a resistance there. There's going to be one in the center of this big drop. Always is. You put your Fibonacci up there, poke the bottom, poke the top. It'll put a whole bunch of algorithmic supports and resistances that you can use to trade on. But I always know there's one dead center. And ballparking it, you can pretty much just start cutting these boxes in half to get your other resistances. Now, as you can see, we are breaking out right now. She hit this low bubble. She broke out over that 50, came down, and she landed on the 200 haul. Now, we've been talking about the 200 haul a lot. Penny stocks are surely respecting it. And she was sitting on this firmly, then pushed herself off. And without looking back, she went through her 50, went through the 200. No testing, no bouncing. She's just climbing right on through. And you can see our volume is getting strong right along with the climbing. All of our oscillators are doing exactly the same thing. They are all pushing up and on fire. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. So she dipped down to that low bubble. Went sideways for a few days, biding time. Why? Well, look at our 200. It's falling. And while she's going sideways, she's waiting for it to get flat. And what happened? I show this to you over and over again, folks. That 200 is flat as a pancake right there. And that's when this weak, this it hasn't been doing nothing for days, has no strength. That's why it's easy to get over when it's flat. No big bars. It just walked over it. And then it got on its nine-day escalator. And look at it. Just rolling uphill, going, going, going. She did crack this uh, resistance at about a buck ninety-two, hitting a dollar ninety-eight. Coming back down, getting right in line. She didn't go all the way down or anywhere. Right back in line, continuing her climb. We do have a little bit of pullback after market hours, but she is far above her nine-day SMA. And look at these SMAs. Those are beautifully combed. That looks like a 70s hairstyle. Osculators, very strong, but that one red bar right there is starting to pull them down. But I'm not going to worry about it. Taking a look at our five-day, five-minute. Perfect chart. Low bubble in that corner, $1.20. High bubble here of $1.98. She has been climbing all this time away from her 200, using the 50 as her solid support to fall onto. She has been working her way up and she looks secure. Now, just because it looks like it's going to keep going on forever <laughs> doesn't mean it's going to. We know sooner or later it has to come down. So we look at our technicals and we see, are they weak or are they strong? Right now, everything is starting to pull back and get weak. Now, she's been running for days. A lot of these penny stocks will run for days and then they got to come back down and refuel. So this may come right back down to the 200. She's on the 50, but she's warping it now. She's bringing that 50 down. So we're down here at a buck 60 at a dollar 82. That could be a drop. It could take time to get there. So she has the potential to climb. There's no doubt about that. She's got news. We don't know what car dealer she's with. Somebody needs to leak that. That would be big news. Drop the name Volvo or Ford or Chrysler or Jaguar. Doesn't matter. Drop a name and this thing would run. But outside of that, she is in the right sector now. She's not in handheld devices. She's in big ticket items. I think it's big news. So even if she comes back down, she's still moving <laughs> and she is coming down a little bit. I expect that in the long run, this stock is going to grow. In the short run, I think it belongs on your watch list, don't you? 
That first stock we looked at, pretty sweet. This one's a little more spicy. This is Porch Group, ticker PRCH. Her chart, it started to break out after she hit a 52-week low at the end of October. She took off and started bouncing towards that 200, got over the 200, and just kept going. So I was looking for all the catalysts for that long run. I have not been able to find any catalyst. It seems to me that once she bounced off that 52-week low, she started getting close to the 200, and that's what was causing the excitement. She was hungry to bounce. Now, we do have a fresh piece of news that just came out yesterday. It is a nice piece of news. It is a fresh catalyst, and it's probably going to keep this stock running. So, Porch finished today at $2.07 with almost 25% gains. She, too, is on the major exchange. She's on the NASDAQ. So what is Porch all about? Well, they tell us over here that Porch is based here in the United States, in Seattle, Washington. They are a vertical software and insurance platform for the home. The company provides software services to approximately 31,000 home service companies, such as home inspectors, mortgage companies, and loan officers, title companies, moving companies, real estate agencies, utility companies, and warranty companies. Through these relationships and its multiple brands, Porch Group provides a moving concierge service to home buyers, helping them save time and make better decisions on critical services including insurance, warranty, moving, security, TV, internet, home repair and improvement, and much more. And we're going to talk about more when we look at the news. So what was their relative volume today? Nice! We got ourselves about 300% increase. It almost tripled, going from 1.5 million up to 4.4 million. Share structure? Not a lot of information here. They tell us the outstanding share count is roughly 100 million. Well, they don't tell us the float, so we know the float won't be any higher than that, and it could be considerably less. Market cap for the company, we're currently at about $163 million. Financials for Porch. Well, as you can see, she's making a leap in her revenues. Back in 2019 in COVID, she was doing just over $70 million. And then in 2021, she jumped all the way to $192 million. And then at the end of 2022, she was at $275 million. So the revenues are picking up really fast and they're making strong profits doing it. Looking at their quarterly reports. All right, looking at this year's because in February, they started selling some new products that they say are making them money fast. So here we are at the beginning of the year at 87 million. June, we're at 98 million. By September, we are up at 130 million. The revenues are picking up. But more importantly, look at the profit margin. Back in June, they did roughly $100 million. They made about $17 million in profit. Add $30 million to that, and what? Four or five times as much profits. They're now up to $76 million. So it's a good formula, whatever they're using right now. Taking a look at that balance sheet for the company. Lots of cash and cash equivalents. Money in the bank. We got $361 million. Don't forget, we got three zeros over here to put behind any of the numbers. Total assets is just under a billion. Ah, total liabilities just over a billion. So we are holding just a little bag here of deficit of about $37,000. Taking a look at the disclosures. Well, we've got a couple current ones here, a Form 4. These are filed whenever the insiders acquire or dispose of shares. We're primarily interested when they buy them and sell them. That's not the case here. These are restricted shares they're working with. And then we've got an 8K that came out on the 27th of November. That's good news. And they didn't even put it out in a news press. The company has regained compliance with the NASDAQ for the minimum bid requirement of a dollar. They were under a dollar for too long. Now they're up over a dollar, way over a dollar, two bucks. So we're way out of hot water now. Taking a look at the news then. So we don't have a lot of news. As I said, I could not find Catalyst, but we did have a piece of news that came out yesterday. Porch Group announces new warranty partnerships and products. This is what they began back in February and have really been focusing on. 
Porch Group, a leading vertical software company reinventing the home services and insurance industries, today announced new partnerships and products in its warranty business. Warranty has grown to become a very profitable business over the last two years, and they are now in 49 states. Porch Warranty, a new home warranty product providing unique consumer benefits such as bundled handyman services, micro warranties protecting homeowner service lines and heating, ventilation and air conditioning, a warranty for extended labor. This was all launched in February of this year and has already delivered good growth. As you could see, their revenues have been getting bigger and bigger, faster and faster. And they are just focusing on this more and more. So the more products they come up with, the more money they're going to make. And they'll come up with a lot of products. And the chart has been hot without Catalyst. And this just came out yesterday. So we've got an extra nitro boost to keep her going. Let's go take a look at this chart. Man, has Porch got a hot chart. We're going to start off by looking at a one-day, one-year chart because today she broke her six-month high. So we're looking at the 52-week high and lows. It was back in February. We were at almost $4, $3.99 before she had this big bad fall all the way down here to about $0.90. Cents. And right now, she's bouncing off of a 52-week low of $0.50. Cents. And as you can see, she is climbing fast and breaking out. Looking at our six month, four hour view. There's our 52 week low at 50 cents and there is our new high on the six month chart at $2.11. As you can see, she just went right across this without any catalyst. Just walked across it. Once she got over the 200, showed a lot of excitement, pushed herself up and away from the 200. Got on that nine day escalator, came down occasionally to bump into the 20 to push off, and she is grabbing more momentum right now. Our 200-day SMA was falling. It is now climbing along with all the other SMAs. You can see our volume was slow back here, medium, and high. Everything is looking hot. And our oscillators, our PPO is climbing strong, just like our MACD, lots of green bars, and our RSI is jumped from 53 up to 76 and is on fire right now. That's a hot four hour chart, folks. Taking a look at the 20 day, one hour view. <laughs> Climbing from one corner to the other, 67 cents up to $2.11 in 20 days. You're looking at roughly 300% gains right there. She's on top of the 200, floating over her 50. She does do her rubber ball bounce on the 50 comes under it like a rubber ball in water and comes right back up. And she's doing that continuously, except for today. Today, she hit the top of the 50 and she launched herself. And it looks like she's still climbing after market, hitting the high she had hit today. This is looking sweet. The volume is very strong today. Oscillators, every single one of them is still climbing and still on fire. You can't go wrong with all your oscillators going up. Five day, five minute. So we got a low back here of $1.35. Not a whole lot of pushing going on here, but once she got over the 200, the climb began, right? She bounced off the fifth or the 200, bounced off it again, rubber ball bounce underneath and shoots, rockets up, comes down, hits her 50. You can see what she's going to be putting her weight on. And she's jumping off that 50 and look at that last bar. That last bar, we hit our high and then it came down off that high bubble. Boom, right back down to the 50. Who knows what it's going to do right now, but it looks like it's paying heed to this 50 very well. So I would presume a bounce. Oscillators, well, that right there just brought everything down. Dink, 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 way down. But I think she's hot, folks. She's got new news. She's got a hot chart. All you need is a catalyst and heat on the chart, and you can normally get some run. It's worth putting on your watch list. P-R-C-H. Thank you very much. This next hot penny stock has got my attention for a lot of juicy reasons, but not all of them are real obvious. This is Lion Group Holdings, ticker LGHL. Now her chart, that's an obvious giveaway. It is a beautiful, atypical breakout chart that is perfectly set up to break out right now. And she has been waiting to do this for a long time. Back in July, they did a reverse split of 1 and 50. 
taking the price clear up to $9.29. And you can see where we're at now, $1.27. And it is set up for the breakout right now. Now, when it comes to Catalyst, she hasn't got any mergers or any acquisitions. What we've got are the financials, but they're impressive. And we've got a very low float. So Lions Group finished today at $1.27, just under 30% gains. And she too, of course, is on the NASDAQ. So what does Lion Group Holdings do? Well, we've got a description here, and I'm sure that's accurate, but they've got a newer one over here in the most recent news press. They tell us here that the company operates an all-in-one, state-of-the-art trading platform that offers a wide spectrum of products and services. But you and I don't trade most of this, at least I don't, including total return service trading, contract for difference trading, insurance brokerage, and futures and securities brokerage. In addition, Lion owns a professional and experienced SPAC sponsorship team to become a leader in the SPAC arena, helping guide private companies through their listing journey while creating value for Lion itself. SPACs are special purpose acquisition companies. These are companies that come onto the major exchange without any business, without any revenues, and just secure a ticker. Then they sell shares in this SPAC for $10, speculative shares. What they're doing is accumulating money. They're going to go find a company that wants to get on to the major exchanges, make a deal with them, and then all that money they've been accumulating from selling those $10 shares goes to that new company as an investment into their success. So that's something else that this company is doing as well. So what was the relative volume around line today? Holy cannoli! Gee whiz! That's 80. That's 80 times her normal volume, jumping from 55,000 to 4 million. Told you folks, it is a catalyst, even though it's not obvious. Share structure for Lion. We got now that's a pretty chart. That looks like a present just waiting to be opened. <laughs> Somebody's got Christmas on their mind. This is Lion Group Holdings, ticker LGHL, and that's a six month, four hour view. We got our low bubble at the start of July at about eight cents. And at the end of July, we had that one in 50 reverse split, which pushed it all the way up to this high of $9.29. And that day, she fell down to $3.20. And from there, she's just been working her way over to the 200 until she lost her footing there and fell. And for the last couple of months, she's been hanging around a buck, a buck ten, just floating on this 50 day SMA, waiting for that 200-day SMA to get close enough. Once it got close enough, she made a break for it. She got up on top, and then she put down a pillar. I like this. Look at this big bar. It went through the 200-day SMA, the 20, the 50, and the 200 haul with extra wick to go down into the ground. Think of it as a pillar holding up a bridge, supporting a structure. That's what I see this doing, supporting growth in the stock. So she pushed herself back up. She got on top of the 200 and stayed there. She was up there for about five days before she did a crouch and pounce like a cat does, right? It crouches down lower before it jumps higher. And that's exactly what we got here. Came down to 93 cents, jumped up to a buck 54, came down and landed securely above the 200 at a buck 27. That looks brilliant to me. We got lots of volume that came in today, especially if you compare it to the stuff prior to it, virtually nothing. Oscillators are showing some strength now. The PPO is about ready to do a crossover and climbing. We've already had a crossover on our MACD. It's approaching the signal line. Lots of green bars accumulating, getting bigger and bigger. And our RSI has jumped from about 34 up to 54. Nice bounce. Taking a look at our 20 day, one hour view. It's really just going sideways, isn't it? She had a big roll up, a big roll down, and another roll up. But what's changing here is the volatility. It is becoming big. We have our low bubble and high bubble both together here. We have big bars. We have her jumping high, coming down low. I think this is worth a watch simply because of the volatility. Our oscillators are still strong. Though they're bobbling around with that volatility. They are still all climbing. And her RSI has gotten a little bit stronger. That's up to 55. 
taking a look at that five day, five minute. All right, that volatility is definitely apparent here. She fell down to 90 cents, wasted a whole day going sideways, then had this huge jump to get over the 200, bounced off for 50, and then took this big lurch up to uh, buck 53, did a water ball bounce under the water, and now she's on her 50. It looks like she's pulling away from the 200, has jumped on her 50, and our 200 has turned up now. That is a good sign on our five-minute chart. All the bars look like they're starting to push up. Looking at our oscillators, we do have recovery going on. Every single one of them are starting to turn up right now. So this looks good, folks. We don't have a hot catalyst unless you want to call the turn around the corner hot. The company went from losing $4 million to being $14 million up. And we've got a super duper low float of at least, or at the most, a million. So I'm liking LGHL. Now there's probably more information out there and it isn't going to hurt you to look into it. Matter of fact, it isn't going to hurt you to do more DD on the other two stocks as well. Remember folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya. Thank you.